you crafted a god roll submission SMG, where would you rank it on a tier list? How about the Huckleberry after it gained over 30% more range this season? With all the changes to zoom stats, range compression, and new weapons, I thought it'd be a good idea to rank every single one of them for you, so I brought along some help from Lunars, who is one of the best players in the world maining SMGs, and then I was lucky enough to have my friend Cole join us, bringing a controller perspective to every ranking as well. Both of these guys run YouTube channels that I'm going to show off a little bit later in the video, but let's start off with the Ikalos. It's an aggressive frame archetype, meaning 750 RPM and very slept on. It's like every once in a while I run into some SMG god out there in Rumble who constantly beats me by what feels like a millisecond and they're using this. Part of what people sleep on is the fact that it has Seraph rounds. It's a second column perk and the in-game menu says that the bullets will bounce kind of like ricochet and over penetrate targets, but what it doesn't tell you is that it also boosts your damage drop off by 10%. Now the beauty here is that Bungie changed the zoom level of 9 SMGs this season and this is one of them. It went up from 13 to 14 and when you combine that with the Seraph rounds perk it turns out to be a bit of a game changer. I'll dig into the whole range compression thing later in the video but I recommend full bore with tap the trigger on this to offset the stability for controller and you've suddenly got yourself an excellent A tier choice for all three characters reaching decent range. The Callus Mini Tool is one that I've already used a lot of different roles on even though it's fairly new. I came out with two favorites, one which was a max range moving target tap the trigger to push that stability out and combat flinch. Another one however was actually Air Assault combined with Eye of the Storm. What I find is if I'm on Titan using Peacekeepers, those boots give you a plus 40 airborne effectiveness stat so you land your shots pretty easily in the air. But on other characters, a lot of people are finding their crits turning into bodies pretty often. While well, using Air Assault means that as your health is getting lower, you're getting more and more airborne effectiveness which kind of combats that, right? And within the same mechanic, you've got Eye of the Storm kicking in to tighten up your accuracy cone. It really helps you finish your fights while you're in the air. Now it's a bit unfortunate that this one still sits at 14 zoom compared to other lightweights that go up to 15 even 16, but the perks are fun, it's a craftable weapon, so there's no RNG wall once you unlock it, and we rated this one as a solid B tier option. I'll probably talk about the fact that this one is solar when I get to the Mida mini tool, but just remember it does have that Mida synergy if you want to run it with the scout rifle, right? Moving on to a precision archetype, we'll look at every waking moment. This is another one of those 9 SMGs that had their zooms changed. In this case, it went up to 14 from 13, and if you have rangefinder on your roll as well, those stack, which resulted in an extra 3.5 meters in in game. It basically makes it viable now. Beforehand, it really didn't even belong in the Crucible, but at least it can manage now if you do happen to like it. Even with this though, it still makes a guy question it over 600 RPM auto rifles. You see, SMGs bring benefits to the table like higher aerial accuracy or hip fire spreads, but they still lack in range and handling by comparison, so I'd never really let someone use this thing over a 600 AR unless they're on those peacekeepers. There are definitely better precision SMGs out there and we rank this one C tier. And now while I promise the whole video won't be all about zoom, it's still really important to point out those big changes, so let's segue into the multi-mock, a former king. And I do say former because it was one of the three that actually had their zooms reduced. Technically four did, but yeah, it went down from 17 to 15 zoom, which really hurt Multimock quite a bit because of the new system tying flinch to the stability stat. Iron Reach helped it pass 80 range, right? But at the cost of minus 30 stability stat. And if you're not aware, not only does more stability reduce your flinch, but going below 20 will actually add flinch to your weapon. So our little friend with 8 stability when you're maxing things out, it is very noticeable now. That being said, it's still the highest range one out there, and as a lightweight, it gives you plus 20 mobility, fast swap speed, solid crit time to kill. It just no longer hangs in the S tier. So as a result, we ended up breaking apart the A tier into A plus and A minus, giving this one A plus. Now speaking of A plus products, if you also weren't aware, I'm actually partnered with Advanced GG now. After testing their powder drink for about two years, I reached out to them to get a discount code so that I could share it with all of you guys. To be completely clear, it is a way to support me because of the commission that I get when you buy this, but I've tried a lot of these in my day and they're the only one that both tastes good and doesn't make me crash at the end of the day like an energy drink would, for example. My my wife even takes this one over coffee if she's heading on a trip or it's warm out. Give it a shot, there's a ton of good flavors out there and just make sure you enter in the code CASTLE in the code box at your checkout. Now talking about our first exotic, I think Huckleberry is a perfect example for me to explain how Bungie changed their range compression on all SMGs. To make this as clear as possible, here's the original range, roughly 15 and a half meters in game, and that was with 13 zoom and 58 range stat. 
Well, Bungie wanted to make the entire weapon class or weapon type better in the game. So what they did is they actually pushed the entire range floor of all SMGs upwards. In this season, that exact same setup is actually just shy of 18 meters. So you can see it went up from 15 and a half. But then I mentioned there were nine SMGs that had their zooms changed, right? Well, Huckleberry was one that went up by two from 13 all the way up to 15, meaning the combination of those two things give it around 20 meters, which is a 30% increase from its original. It's extremely noticeable now for anyone out there who used to main Huckleberry. I'm sure you noticed right away. If anyone new, Ride the Bull is the perk, basically giving it that spin up feel, increasing the rate of fire over time. It also reloads a portion of the mag after a kill so you can keep it going, but I recommend the Catalyst to fill the whole mag. We rank this one A+, and the only finicky thing is that it still has that sight issue where bullets seem to not go where the reticle is every once in a while, but it is what it is. Now I want to cover the fourth archetype, so let's just do another exotic with the Risk Runner. It's an adaptive, which is a 900 RPM just like lightweights, but it deals different damage without movement bonus. Instead of 19 crit, 11 body, this one will deal 17 crit and 11.25. Note the decimals on screen and how rounding works in Destiny, but basically adaptives have worse crit with slightly better body damage damage, giving it a worse time to kill in exchange for the higher base stats, instability, and range. Comparing Risk Runner to Multimock, for example, you can see the 50 versus 29. That being said, since Risk's zoom is only 13 compared to Multimock's 15, it comes out in the wash, so you're really just here for that stability and the exotic perk. It's either doing nothing for you or everything. To run through that really quickly, there's three main things. Taking arc damage from your opponent will overcharge this thing. When it's overcharged, it gains 10% extra damage, it adds 50% damage resist for you along with 100 handling and some reload mechanics. And finally, the third is the fact that it has a chance to actually chain enemies, like think Dune Marcher style. We ultimately rank this one B tier overall, but it's mainly something that you should just have ready for when you're playing people using arc, and I will talk about adaptives a bit more later. All right, how about Stochastic? It's a unique 900 RPM SMG as well, because while it's a lightweight, it also has a perk called Phase Mag in the second column. Although it's not an amazing weapon, I do want to take a second to say Bungie, it's really nice when you kind of make these twists into weapons, like Seraph Rounds, for example. I just like that it adds a uniqueness to all of these weapons. And what this one does is that when you apply Phase Mag, it'll convert it into a 600 RPM archetype. I know I made the whole argument earlier about ARs being a better alternative if you're not on Titans with Peacekeepers, but I will just say that it's really nice to keep the benefits of a lightweight for frame with faster sprint speed and 20 mobility boost, you know, something that you can't get on ARs for example. All things considered though, it lost its really nice sight from year one and it just can't compete range wise. If you do use it, I recommend killing wind, but we ended up putting this one in the C tier. Talking about Shayura's Wrath, there's of course the adept version, but we'll just do this one in one section. I think it was Bungie's way of answering that whole AR versus SMG decision within that 600 RPM family. To remind you, they both deal the same crit damage, but SMGs deal 16 to the body instead of 14 on ARs, which is balanced by the fact that they have less range and handling. The reason Shayura's blew up in popularity popularity is because it was the one time you could play at nearly 30 meters in game pretty comfortably on an SMG. It was clearly outside of the intended bandwidth though, so they recently brought that zoom down from 17 to 16, which reined it into around 27 meters at max. Now it's more so whether you want the range of an AR or the airborne effectiveness of an SMG, because at 25 it's better than almost every single auto rifle in the game that's not exotic. All in all, this thing has amazing perks, too many to list right now, and it still hangs at the top of the S tier now, it's just a bit more balanced. The title was introduced in the Guardian games. You know, that three week thing that we all wish was just a big team battle of 3v3v3 activities, but actually isn't. Yeah, a man can dream. See, the title is tied for highest zoom within the aggressives, which is a good call from Bungie when they brought it in, allowing it to reach 22 meters on a fairly forgiving time to kill archetype. It's got higher base stability, good airborne effectiveness, all around a solid option. I really like the fact that it has hip fire grip too, by the way. It's nice seeing that perk for fast cleanups, like when you shotgun someone, they're almost never dying now, right? Well, if they're weak, you can just swap to this and fire right away without worrying about your accuracy before having to ADS. We were torn on ranking this one, but we ended up going with B tier because Ikelos does have a slight edge on it. With 9 SMGs ranked so far, you'll notice I've mentioned the stability stat, and it's not just because of the flinch, but also because of controller players. After surveying a bunch of controller folks using SMGs, that seemed to be the number one spot that you need to spec into a little bit more. And this was exactly in line with Man of Cole's thoughts, and why I'm so glad he was willing to do this collab with us. He brought a ton of controller knowledge to every decision and ranking that we made, and he makes some tremendous content on his channel, you guys. An example is that video he did on Sweet Sorrow. He always just brings such a well-rounded thought on everything 
everything that he covers and it'd be really cool if you guys gave one a watch letting him know that it was from this video and I think you'll come to enjoy his perspectives on Destiny overall. Okay let's loop back to the Mida mini tool because I mentioned it during Callus. We're going to take about eight seconds to review this you know Fallout Zer style. It's got the Mida synergy thing I mentioned before but wow does this one suck. I'd rather take a super soaker into a fight and the only thing I wanted to say was the fact that it's solar giving you some really fun synergies using the new solar 3.0 fragment but like I said so is Callus. I have zero clue why Bungie left this one at 13 zoom given its current stats. Give it something special Bungie like a hundred airborne effectiveness or something. I don't know just give it something to use. Anyway it's a D tier SMG and we're going to move on to the forensic nightmare. This one's kind of middle of the pack for the precision frames. It does have the second best airborne stat but the lowest range. If you get kill clip you're going to have a blast with this thing when it's active and the nicest thing overall is the fact that it's craftable. You see some of the SMGs in this list today are so special when you have that god roll that this thing is really nothing compared to them. However those are often versions of a weapon that you'll never see in the game. With trying to stay consistent in the comparisons, we ended up ranking this one C tier, but it's worth noting that the crafted god roll shown on screen is better than many of the bad rolls on higher ranked weapons. If you've already crafted one, let us know down below what your thoughts are. On that topic of RNG, let's talk about the borrowed time. This thing is very good and highly slept on, so I think it's a good time to explain why aggressives are solid options now that Bungie has buffed all SMG ranges across the board. Let's just say you're fighting a 6 resilience opponent. Here are the 4 time to kill and bullet counts for all of those 4 archetypes. Notice the two TTKs being the same, a lot of people seem to forget that. The catch on aggressives is the fact that if you miss a few headshots, like let's say you go 9 headshots, 3 body shots on a lightweight, that's 0.73 seconds killing 8 resilience and lower, right? Well, the aggressive only needs to hit 7 crit and 3 body to kill 10 resilience and down in that same time frame. Essentially the advantage is having an allowance for less accuracy which is starting to creep in on hunters and warlocks especially for SMGs because of the new airborne effectiveness stuff going on. The issue all along has been how insanely hard it was to get a good roll on this thing with 8 billion perks. I think if you have this exact specific roll on screen it'll hang in the S tier category at 25 four meters with solid stability but if you don't have it the thing is still an A+. Only issue is even with the new method of obtaining gambit weapons being better you'll still need enough hours in there that it will change you as a human being. So you know there's that IRL trade-off right? Escape Velocity is another one that we flip-flopped a couple times in the rankings because it's a lightweight 900 RPM having the highest zoom now. While the multi mock was brought down to 15, this one was only brought down to 16. That's right, it had the same crazy level of zoom as multi mock, and no one ever talked about it simply because the actual range stat is so low without iron reach. I think that's why they only brought it down by one instead of two, because when you do the math, it's around the same now. This SMG isn't something insanely special across the board, but there are a couple of things going for it, like Vorpal, Elemental Capacitor, with an enormous mag if you're using Overflow, but I think the number one way to use this, and I hate that I'm even saying it, is with Dead Messenger. Remember I mentioned cleanups with hip fire grip? Well, if you use that in the kinetic slot with the dead messenger in your energy, it's insane. I can't get over how good that synergy is, but overall we rank this one as a B tier on a standalone SMG standpoint. All right, a weapon of sorrow, I think, right? Osteostriga, did I say that right? I'm pretty much a lore expert, I know. I get a lot of comments in my other videos showing gameplay with it about how they hate it, but I'm telling you there is a skill gap to this thing. It's a 600 RPM, but it deals 25 crit and 18 body. This immediately makes up for its low zoom because if you compare it to other 600s at base 23 and 16, it's kind of wild how much damage this thing does. On paper, it's a 0.7 second TTK with eight crits, but that's not really true because when you hit seven Seven crits in a row. The perk on this exotic activates a burn hitting your enemy kind of like necrotic grips and that will kill them. Basically hitting seven crits in a row will secure your kill and guess what? That is a 0.6 second time to kill. The reason people don't like it is because of that delay right? It feels very weird not being a hit scan weapon. I'm telling you though lead your shots a bit and leave your fight early. That is the key. It'll feel very weird dipping from a fight without knowing you got the kill but eventually you'll get the hang of your timing and because the bullets track to your target so strongly with such a massive hitbox, they'll die while you're behind cover. 
Catalyst adds reload mechanics and 20 stability. We ended up ranking this one A minus, but I bet in the hands of someone like Walla who puts enough time under their belt using it could push it even further. Speaking of skill gap and one of the best SMG mains out there, I wanted to show you guys Lunar's channel. Most people know him for Twitch because they get to just sit back and watch Wii Rans all day long, but he recently started a YouTube channel making videos on kind of like these thought pieces or his opinions around the mindset of a top 0.1% player. And what they often do is try to provide that perspective in contrast to say a casual player's point of view. There's been a few videos out there that really opened my eyes to a few things. And so feel free to give it a check, see what you think, let them know if you have any ideas or anything you'd want to hear his thoughts on and just mention that you found him through this video. Next up we have Cold Front. I'm really sad about this one because I thought oh my god we're getting the Antiope in 750 RPM form. The biggest issue it's had since release is 13 zoom and I know I talk about that a lot you guys but on low range SMGs it's the only thing saving you. For some reason however Bungie just forgot about this one. No change at all and Rangefinder would be the only savior but you can't even get that on it anymore. I remember getting excited to main double harmony SMGs on Titan with Peacekeepers like using Shiras with this thing but even that was terrible. I really can't express how bad this thing is it's ultimately just d tier and that's that submission however now that is something i can get behind i wasn't hearing too many good things early on and yes i'm a late raider guys i suck when it comes to pve but wow is this thing fun one weird thing I do have to point out is that if you have a mediocre roll on it, it can feel pretty underwhelming. So if there was one SMG I had to pick that truly transforms from one roll to another, it'd be this one. The good news though is that it's craftable. After using max range with perpetual motion to balance the stability loss, I have fully 180'd. I know it can be a hassle to get red borders in the game, but if you can craft yourself a full board accurized perpetual motion with either killing wind or harmony, it is wonderful. There's something so satisfying about the hit marking on this thing too. I don't really know what it is, but do not sleep on this 15 zoom lightweight. It's one of my favorite kinetics now, and we gave it a solid A plus rating. Yes, the Unforgiven. It's a new 750 RPM aggressive that hopefully introduces people a bit more to this archetype. I just hope it doesn't leave a sour taste. You see, it really doesn't compete with the best aggressives out there unless you have a specific perk. Fragile Focus. You'll see it on the left hand side when it's active on screen and it's giving you a plus 20 to your range stat. This is up there until you take damage, and when that happens, there's going to be a 5 second cooldown before it can come back, but just think about that for a second. An aggressive frame with the ability to break 90 in the range stat. For the fourth column, I'd recommend either Frenzy or Rampage. Those are generally great for transforming SMG TTKs in quick play, you know, like 6v6, but admittedly it's not as useful in something like Trials. The Origin trait gives you faster reload after taking damage, which I suppose goes hand in hand with Fragile a bit. Ultimately, we were torn on this one because when Fragile is up, it can perform like an A minus, but sadly without it, it's really only better than say Cold Front in the aggressive category. We ended up ranking this one in the C tier. Now the Enyo D is a similar story actually. It's almost verbatim sitting with the same pros and cons, so I'm just going to try and summarize that again. This one is my favorite SMG model, although Unforgiven is a really cool looking one. The sights are just so clean on these ones. It can't keep up with the OG Antiope, that's for sure, and it's truly middle of the pack within the Precision Archetype, which makes you really question whether you should use it over an AR. But if you land Fragile Focus, you will really enjoy it. We rated this one B tier and thought we'd just throw out the question to the community, do you think we should swap it with Unforgiven? I'd love to know your thoughts. But moving on, we have the Funnel Web. This one took us on a roller coaster. I, for example, loved this thing at release, not because of the whole PvE hype thing, but simply because it was a better death adder. Then all of a sudden, I just could not get a roll that I wanted to stick with. I ended up always going back to Borrowed Time or Ikalos until I finally got the right one. You've heard me talk about Rangefinder a couple of times now, so let me just remind you that not only does it add 10% to your distance, but the damn thing pushes out your aim assist cone by 30%, okay? That is such an enormous buff to keep your SMGs feeling sticky with their hit markers and we were trying to think of how to explain how good this thing can truly be and I think the best way is comparing it to the multi-mob. That thing you had to deal with the god-awful 8 stability for the extra range but it was worth it in the past but now that it's nerfed and flinch is tied to stability as well it's a way worse trade-off. That's where this thing comes in giving you all of that without those issues. It can break 23 meters while maintaining incredible stability thanks to its high base and perpetual motion. Mark my words, this is an S tier SMG and my overall sleeper pick of the whole list today. Give Funnel Web a shot and with that I did want to take
take a quick moment to mention my Discord and Twitter. Videos like this would not be possible without me getting to compare true god rolls on all of the weapons coming from the Discord. So if you want to join the community, I highly recommend it. We get to do a lot together. Check the link in the description. And then on the flip side, I'm really trying to build my brand across all fronts. So if you use Twitter at all, look up at Castle Content if you want to reach me there. I'm going to be giving away some advanced GG starter packs on all the platforms. But moving on to the Hero's Burden, the new, well, not really new, but sort of new Iron Banner SMG. There are three versions of this thing, and I kind of want to know what your thoughts are on returning weapons. I think as a community, we want new content, so Bungie pumps out weapons every single season, but it's like they can't keep up, right? So they end up just kind of going through the motion of bringing these weapons back. First, we had the curated original Hero's Burden. That thing had 16 zoom. It could reach 22 meters. Then we had the second version, absolutely crushing skulls with 17 zoom and kill clip breaking 25 meters. Now we have the third version somewhere in the middle. Fragile focus combined with iron reach can definitely push it up there, in which case I'd say do not go full bore unless your stability is above 20. Remember, going below 20 stability will actually add flinch to the baseline. Otherwise, if you don't have iron reach, I'd say Eye of the Storm is really nice as well. The three of us all liked it, and while it's nothing to write home about when the old one is clearly better, this one is still a solid option and not sunset, right? We went with A- minus because hey, sometimes when you're in the air missing your headshots, you can still have a decent time to kill on the adapt archetype which is exactly what hero's burden is now while everyone's talking about that last smg you should actually check your vault for the extraordinary rendition it's one of the higher range 750s and a kinetic slot option i'll end up talking about friction fire as well for that reason but yeah the perks on this one are really fun things like fresh to help you out with the new intellect system getting your super back tap the trigger adding 40 stability on your trigger pull or firmly planted in the third column if you're a crouch spammer extraordinary rendition is a reliable a plus smg that not enough people talk about although I prefer the borrowed time. I love that this one's kinetic. Seventh Seraph will be pretty quick here. Don't use this over any other 600 AR, but compared to other SMGs, I will say this one thing. 600s will always feel comfortable. They're kind of like the worst when comparing true peak capabilities outside of Shira's, of course, but they're always going to be an option to get the job done for most players because of their intrinsically highest base range. You'll never go on tears with this thing, but it'll just always be okay. Think of it like every waking moment, but this one doesn't need rangefinder to reach similar damage drop-offs, and with the small perk pool, you can get a pretty well-rounded version using Firmly Planted, Elemental Capacitor, or Vorpal. This one's probably the best C tier, or maybe the worst B tier, and that's ultimately where we left it. Now, I always gotta throw your souls into the fire at least once in each video, right? And that brings me to Death Adder. Similar to Mida Mini Tool, the Forensic Nightmare, Cold Front, it's like Bungie just forgot to update this one. I don't know why, it's just essentially a bad funnel web now. It feels really nice as a weapon, but unless you're inside of, say, 17 or 18 meters, you're gonna struggle with it. Range Finder can definitely push it out, so don't write it off, but with how strong the energy SMGs are right now in the game, this one struggles to keep up. I know a lot of people love it, but I'm telling you, drop it for the funnel web, unless of course you're using Solar 3.0 specifically for that one synergy using the fragments, but we ranked it C tier, folks. I don't know if that'll convince you to swap the funnel web, or maybe it'll just end up keeping you on Death Adder in spite, but either way, we are going to move on to Friction Fire. Circling back to the whole kinetic and energy topic, did you know that there's 15 energy SMGs while only 10 kinetics that aren't sunset? It's a wider split than I thought until making this video, and Friction Fire is one that I mentioned earlier as a kinetic option to rely on. In fact, until Anyo D and Forensic came along, it was the only one of its kind here. Even though not many people have it, those that do should search it in their newly minted 600 space vault. As a precision archetype, I'd say that this is the only one that stands with Shiura's and me saying that it's worth using over a 600 auto rifle, so long as you have the right roll. To reiterate, as a Titan using Peacekeepers, I think the answer is clear, but for Hunters and Warlocks, I'd say it stops with these two. Friction is tied for the highest zoom, it's got a really nice model and sights. The main downside is that it doesn't have that special airborne effectiveness. For example, it's around 12 compared to something like Shira's around 25, and currently Bungie hasn't done a great job allowing us to spec into that airborne stat. I like to use Killing Wind with Slideways, but Wellspring's great, Rampage, Vorpal. Give it a shot, we ended up ranking this one A- minus because it's quite reliable. Finally, we have Teraba. You knew I had to leave it to the end, right? I'll never forget that chart Bungie showed. The one about win rates on certain weapons in the Crucible. You know, things like Bellwinters, hand cannons were at the top. When people use them, they win games. But then there was Teraba just kind of silently leading the pack going unnoticed. I feel like people just struggled with how the perk worked or they'd always swap by accident. But I wanted to mention this thing has been buffed in three ways. 
First of all, with the overall SMG floor going up, it now reaches 22 meters. Think about that for a second while Ravenous Beast is active. If that wasn't enough, I think they wanted to clear that confusion around the perk. They made it easier to activate. Basically, for those unaware, when you have this weapon out, dealing or taking damage eventually adds up to a total which unlocks Ravenous Beast. You can then hold reload down to activate it, and it turns it into a 900 RPM dealing 33 damage regardless of a headshot or a body shot. The only catch is that if you swapped away from it, you would reset that buildup that you were charging. Well, they made it way easier now because when you swap, you only lose 50% of that progress. The perk is up a lot more often now, and the third buff would probably be the icing on the cake, being the fact that it's an exotic. All exotics have a special higher airborne effectiveness. They kept this one at 23, which is low for other exotics, but I think it's obvious why now, and it's still higher than most legendaries anyways. This thing's just on another level. It gets its own rating in the T tier, folks. Absolute monster. Thank you so much, Cole, for joining Lunars and I to bring that controller perspective in all of our rankings and everyone. I've put both of their YouTube channel links on screen. Give them a watch and let me know what you think. I appreciate all of your time and have a great day.